Hello, everybody. It is Tom, and we are back with episode seven of Heartstopper, and this one is called Bully. So yeah, gonna be a fun episode. <laughs> yeah. So um, just assuming that the majority of you have already watched the series, since I like give spoilers throughout the whole thing, because obviously I have seen all the episodes many times. But um, yeah, episode seven is kind of where things take a turn, and we get some of the only like real drama that we get through the series. And of course, even that will be resolved fairly quickly. But this is definitely the heaviest episode and ends on the darkest note of all of them. But in any case, so last time, episode six, Girls, uh, Nick started to discover his bisexuality and he was able to talk with Charlie and also talk with Tara, Tara and Darcy about how he's been feeling, which is great. Um, we had the concert, we had the milkshake cafe, we had homophobia <laughs> in, in excess, and uh, yeah, so a very good episode, and moving on to another good, but a little bit challenging episode. So let's go on to episode seven, Bully. I really love that mirror that Charlie has in his room. It's very cool. Where are you going? Nick's invited me around to the cinema with his friends. Glad Nick's such a nice friend. Actually, we're... Me and Nick, we're kind of going out. <laughs> Called it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure Tori knew a long time before now. But it is nice that, that Charlie felt comfortable telling her. Yeah, and I, I, one thing I noticed throughout throughout this series is that the camera angles are always interesting. Like in this one, for example, we're only seeing uh, Charlie's view of Tori. We see him kind of looking up at her from from below. So nice POV shot. You're hanging out with his mates now. They don't seem that nice compared to Nick. I'll be fine. So is he your boyfriend? We're not ready to label it yet. I love how Ben has his own theme music that. You know, some something something bad and Ben is about to go down. So I was wondering if you wanted to come over. I thought since we're boyfriends. We're not boyfriends. Why would you think we're boyfriends? I mean, we make out all the time, you say I'm cute, but no, yeah, of course there's no not boyfriends at all. Dad in his usual place in the car. He's not allowed to leave. Like he drives Charlie home, and Charlie goes into the house, and Dad just stays in the car. He lives there. If any of those boys says anything, does anything nasty, you just call me, okay? Nick's gonna be there. I'll be fine. Yeah, it's great that Charlie's dad is so supportive. Um, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure that he saw the horrible things that Charlie went through the previous year when he was being bullied. And, uh, but yeah, he always, he's always very protective of Charlie, which is, is good to see. Hi. I love the way they hug each other. Are you sure your friends are going to be okay with me being here? Yeah, of course. We'll be fine. Ben and Harry will come. Mm, if only. They get to have like two minutes of happiness and then. Look, Nick and his best mate. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Harry. Why are you bring him? So glad Harry and Ben came to this. Is your mate Ben? Dude, Charlie. Never even spoke to <sighs> Ben, 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 Ben. Yeah, so <laughs> here we have Ben doing his normal thing. Never even spoken to him. Yeah, he and Charlie have never spoken at all. <laughs> Why can't any of you ever bring a girl with you? Where's your girl, Harry? Yeah, once again, we have Harry, like, I don't know, attacking everyone else's inability to uh to get a girlfriend and then clearly not having his own either so i'm not really hungry to be honest you got some though sure are you okay i wonder if charlie even hears a word that nick says after char char uh wow that just slipped out oh my god say it again no go on no i like it it's cute. It is incredibly cute. Now, of course, we must notice here how everyone is sitting. Ben sitting directly behind Nick and Charlie. I'm sure that won't be important later. 
Now we notice here that Nick is the one who grabs Charlie's hand when the scare happens. Sorry. And Charlie apologizes. <laughs> like, Charlie, what what are you even apologizing for? Nick grabbed your hand. <laughs> Them and their pinky touches. You're a dog. Yeah, and we can very, very clearly see Ben, like, looking down and seeing their, their clasped hands and not looking happy about it. I can't believe what a wimp you are. Uh, you jumped all the scares too. Uh, no, I jumped when you screamed. I mean, Nick and Charlie are at the movies with Nick's friends, of course, but they're kind of in their own little bubble during the movie itself. Like, the, I'm sure the, the way that they were sitting was not coincidental where, like, Nick has Charlie, like, Nick is literally forming a barrier between Charlie and all the other guys. Charlie sat way down at the end. Um, so Nick and Charlie are kind of in their own little bubble during the movie, and then going out, they're talking and laughing and just having having a normal good time. And then here comes Harry to ruin it all. So, Charlie Spring, quick question. What's it like being gay? <laughs> yeah, and we, we've talked about this before, but the form of um, bullying in the form of conversation is really rearing its head here like i mean nothing that harry says here would like go on a list of horrible things to say to someone but he is very much bullying charlie obviously like what's it like being gay and do you like musicals and all this other bullshit stuff you don't seem that gay to be honest i mean you do sound so gay but that's it notice how harry keeps looking back at the lads like looking back at his friends like it's very clear that he is doing this for their reaction like the only reason he is talking to to charlie this way is because he wants to he wants to make his friends laugh and like put charlie down to bring himself up so and what the hell, you sound sort of gay? What the fuck, Harry? <laughs> Do you like musicals? Harry, can you just piss off, please? Nick tries to be fairly polite the first time, despite the fact that he's clearly seething. Harry does not take the hint. What sort of guys do you like, then? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what about Harry Styles? He's pretty sexy. <laughs> Once again, looking back, looking back at the lads. Ha ha ha, isn't this funny? Let's all make a joke of, of the gay boy. What about Nick? You think he's hot? Are you joking? Nick's not even my type. <laughs> yeah, no, of course, Charlie is saying this specifically to protect Nick. Um, because obviously he doesn't want them to have any idea that they're together. But the look on Nick's face when Charlie says this, like, it's clear that, like, he hates the fact that Charlie has to lie for him. Um, he hates the fact that Charlie can't just be honest. And I'm sure it hurts him a little bit to hear the person that he really likes saying, Nick's not even my type. So there's a lot going on here. And the physical aspect of it, too, where, like, again, Harry is not punching Charlie. He's not pushing him. He's doing things that would be construed as friendly, like putting his arm around him and, you know, putting him in kind of a headlock situation. Like, everything that he's doing from a distant observer would look to be friendly but it is absolutely not and like that i feel like that variety of bullying is often overlooked but i mean when i was in high school i experienced that a lot so i don't i don't know you do <laughs> stop wow take a joke me and again calling it a joke like just being an absolute ass and the second someone calls you out on it being like, oh, I was joking. Wait. I'm so sorry. It's fine. No. I'm honestly used to it by now. I'll see you at school. Yeah, and the look of just kind of heartbreak on Nick's face when he hears Charlie say that, I'm honestly used to it. Like, I think it's important to remember that even though Nick was kind of aware of Charlie, of what Charlie went through with the bullying and everything, I don't think he was quite aware of how much of it has continued and how kind of accustomed to these kinds of comments that Charlie has gotten. So like as, as someone coming in with a set of fresh eyes, he's able to really see how messed up it is. Whereas for Charlie, it's just kind of like, no, this is just how it is.
And here comes, here comes, uh, Ben, Ben entering the shot like a serial killer, part two. <laughs> and we can just see, like, just before Ben comes out, we can see the door shut behind Nick. So Nick has literally just missed this very disturbing, like, the first time I saw this and, and Ben comes out of the shadows, like he's gonna murder Charlie in the parking lot, I just... I got so tense like it is it is a legitimately scary scene and if if I didn't know that this was Heartstopper and nothing bad was going to come of it like I would be very worried for Charlie's safety. I saw you holding hands with him. Are you going out with him then? No. But you are getting with him. No. Don't lie. Yeah and Ben here Ben here is very interesting as always awful also as always but interesting because like I mean he I just imagine him like sitting through that movie seething because Nick and Charlie are holding hands the whole time. And then he left the theater like on his own and like went to skulk by the parking garage so he could challenge Charlie like or the parking lot or whatever it is. Um, yeah, like I think it's really clear how much... Ben is not able to let go of his quote unquote relationship with Charlie. Like it's very clear that it bothers him. He is jealous that Charlie has found someone else and it's making him feel shit about himself. Um, yeah. And I, I also wonder if it bothers him that, I mean, even though they're not being super out or super open about it, like Nick and Charlie are sitting there holding hands in a movie theater so they're in a public place showing affection to each other and that's something that ben feels like he can't do or may never be able to do so i'm sure that bothers him as well and just seeing charlie happy in general like i feel like i feel like ben um derives a lot of his i feel like ben is miserable and so he feels like charlie another gay boy or you know another queer boy should also be miserable or like, I think he feels like as long as Charlie is more miserable than he is, he's doing okay. So, but anyway, let's continue the scene. <laughs> Sorry, we have another, we have a visit from, from Darla again. Darla, I, I'm busy right now. <laughs> okay, let's continue this very serious scene while a cat stares at me. No, don't get on the table. Yep, moving on. <laughs> As I drop my phone on the keyboard. Yep. Well, I believe that you're not going out with him. As if anyone would ever want to go out with someone as desperate as you. You did? Are you joking? You actually thought I liked you. This line is really interesting. Where Ben says, Are you joking? You actually thought I liked you. So, this is a parallel of exactly what Charlie said. Fuck's sake. All right, fine. Sit over there. Sit on the desk, but stay away from my camera. All right. So this is a parallel of what Charlie said earlier when... Look at this. Look at this right now. Look at these shenanigans. Seriously, Darla. Darla, sweetheart. <laughs> sweetheart. If you're asking yourself, did Darla stop the video recording the answer is yes yes she did <laughs> she leaned her head on the keyboard and stopped the recording so anyway as i was attempting to say prior to cat interference um yeah so back in the theater um harry asks charlie if he thinks nick is hot and charlie says are you joking nick's not even my type so Charlie, with that same phrasing, is lying and also trying to protect Nick from being outed. And here we have Ben using the exact same phrasing, are you joking? And then also lying and saying, I never liked you or whatever, whatever it is. Yo, you actually thought I liked you or something like that. So like, it's an interesting parallel and another kind of like Charlie is protecting Nick, but Ben obviously is just protecting himself um, with what he's saying here. You were just there like some tragic loser with barely any friends who ate lunch alone every day and let bullies walk all over you. I never liked you. Yeah, and you can hear as he's saying this how like upset he is 
and angry and he's just lashing out at Charlie with these horrible things that are clearly lies but I'm sure are doing a lot of damage to Charlie. I'm not even gay, I just felt really sorry for you. Yeah, and that last one, like, I'm not even gay, I just felt really sorry for you, is just, like, the most absolute bullshit thing I have ever heard. <laughs> like, yeah, because when you feel sorry for someone, I mean, clearly Ben is the kind of person to just sacrifice anything to help someone feel better. But, yeah, like, he, he felt sorry for Charlie, so he made out with him secretly for months. Like, that's, that's something that people do, right? That's something that people do. Yeah, but just, like, Ben is such a study of, like, projection, for one thing. Um, like, back in the early episodes when he tells Charlie, oh, you're just scared of getting caught, when obviously he's the one who's scared of getting caught. Um, but he's also just... He always lashes out. He always tries to put Charlie down. Um, and it's like he's trying to keep his own self-worth up. By l It's getting close to dinner time. That's why we're having all this feline interruption going on here. I should have thought this through better. But there we go. Anyway, I don't even remember what I was saying. So let's continue. <laughs> Charlie, you ready to go? Yeah. I don't know what, I wonder what Ben was hoping to accomplish here, like what what kind of reaction he was hoping to get out of Charlie, um, but I think it's really nice, not nice, but Charlie, d could you not lick my arm while I'm trying to talk to the people, please? <laughs> um, yeah, Charlie doesn't yell, he doesn't cry, he just quietly responds to his dad. You can also see my sleeve is coming out of my shirt. This is a mess! This whole, this whole video is a mess. <laughs> so Charlie just quietly says, yeah, to his dad and leaves. Like, he doesn't respond to any of the bullshit that Ben has said. Which is, I mean, it would be great to see him, like, take Ben down a peg like he does in the next episode. But it's just not that moment for him right now. And, yeah, like, if I had just heard all of that awful abuse from Ben, I would have a hard time replying either. And here we see Charlie's dad exert some extreme restraint and not hit Ben with his car. What was that about? Nothing. He's got one. Yeah, and dad knows that Charlie, Charlie doesn't want to talk about it, but he still like reaches out to kind of grip his arm and show him his support. Like, you know, I know that you don't want to talk about this or you can't talk about this, but I'm here for you. So Charlie's dad is just a superstar during this whole thing. I hope he can escape from the car in future seasons. <laughs> and here we go. Angry, angry Nick. Go on then. What's your problem with Charlie? <laughs> he doesn't exactly fit in with us, does he? <laughs> now, during this whole scene, keep an eye on uh, Cy, Christian, and Otis, who are in the back. Um, while the guys in the front are laughing and thinking that Harry, you know, reacting to Harry's general ass hattery, they look uncomfortable and they do not laugh at him. Like, yeah. So I, I hope that that's setting up for the reconciliation in season two where Cy, Christian and Otis and Nick are able to be friends and kind of distance themselves from Harry and the other assholes, but we'll see. <laughs> Can't play rugby. He's got this weird friend who won't leave me alone. Speaking of projection, um, this weird friend that won't leave me alone, like, when has Tao ever come up to you? When has Tao ever started the argument? Like, just, like, Harry is obsessed with Tao. I think we can agree at this point. Um, and, like, the fact that he is accusing Tao of not leaving him alone. I just like, it's, it's so interesting to see when bullies turn things around like that. Like, for example, when, you know, after the fight later, when Charlie is asking Harry, like, what happened to you? And Harry's like, oh, I'd done nothing wrong. And Nick just attacked me. Like, or, you know, oh, you can't take a joke. Like, they're always, even though they must know on some level that what they're doing is awful and wrong, they still manage to, like, come out with these reasons why they are, in fact, the victim. So here's that same situation where, like, 
Tao is literally just defending himself when Harry keeps making fun of him and Charlie. And Harry's like, oh yeah, this kid won't leave me alone. What the hell? So this is a problem with him being gay? Come on. None of us are being homophobic. And I love how Harry's saying, like, none of us are being homophobic comes, like, 20 seconds before he literally says, like, a, a gay slur. <laughs> like, no, no, we're not homophobic at all here. Oh, just shut up, Harry! You made him so uncomfortable with your gay questions. Someone really needs to learn to take a joke. No, but you weren't joking though, were you? You can't help wanting to protect him, can you? Because he's a pathetic little fag. Now, for the record, I do not condone fighting, but I will not deny the fact that I was I was not sad to see Nick punch uh, Harry after that comment, because, oh my gosh. I'm just so angry at myself for not seeing that all of my friends suck. Yeah, I love this as kind of a clarity moment for Nick. Like, he sort of had this realization earlier at the party when, you know, he told Harry he doesn't like him and he told, he told Charlie, like, I'd rather just hang out with you. I don't think I want to hang out with those guys anymore. But I think, obviously, this is the moment when it finally goes far enough where he's like, no, this is bullshit. <laughs> like, I think, I think, like, Finally, I mean, he finally reached his breaking point with seeing how how much it hurt Charlie. Um, the fact that Harry was saying those things and like the guys were either laughing or saying nothing, you know, to stop him from that. And also just the re the revelation probably that, yeah, Charlie, this is normal for Charlie. Like this happens to him all the time. And that is awful. So it's good that Nick reaches this point, obviously, but yeah, so it seems like he needed that kind of, that kind of dramatic moment to finally sever his ties with these guys. Sweetheart, you know, fighting's not the answer. I know. He just used a really bad word. Yeah, and the look on, on, um, I want to say Olivia, the look on Nick's, Nick's mom's face, like, I wonder if she, I mean, at this point, we can kind of, figure that she's sort of she's sort of putting things together like she's met charlie um she doesn't necessarily know that he's gay but like the way that nick phrases this i think it's pretty clear what harry said um so i think at this point she you know she can kind of get the idea but as we listen to what she says next charlie's a really special friend isn't he yeah and the way that she looks at him then just like with with her eyes full of kind of love and sadness like I really think that she's starting to figure it out at this point and in in the comics when Nick does come out to her he I think he asks her if she had any idea or something along those lines and she says that like she had kind of a suspicion because she saw how much Nick cared for Charlie so I think this is kind of showing us that from her from her perspective that she does kind of there's a little something more going on between between Nick and Charlie. Nick is still not quite ready to come out to her. And I don't blame him. Like, after all that he's been through tonight, like, it's been a roller coaster of an evening, and putting coming out to his mom on top of that would be a lot. Yeah. He is. Yeah, and we see Charlie kind of, like, shutting out the world and uh even tori like it looks like tori wants to talk to him wants to ask if he's okay i'm sure she guessed that's i mean obviously something happened in the movies but charlie just like puts on those headphones and doesn't even want to interact with the world kind of the beginning of him like closing in on himself that we start to see in the next episode looking for your boyfriend yeah and even after everything that happened the previous night like harry just can't shut up like he just he needs to maybe he feels like at this point even that he needs to like um redeem himself in the eyes of his friends by showing like yeah i'm still on top see look at this look at me make fun of this of this gay boy like that what happened to you ask nick nelson he's got some serious anger issues yeah nick has anger issues that's that's the problem harry that's the issue you just can't seem to take a joke anymore yeah he starts a fight when i've done nothing wrong what's going on you okay 
yeah, you did nothing wrong. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I love how Tao like runs in. <laughs> He's like out of breath. Like, what's going on? Are you OK? Are you OK, Charlie? What's happening? Clearly didn't get hugged much as a child. But if you're craving human contact that badly, you could just say so. Tao. That's one of my favorite of Tao's comeback lines. You clearly didn't get hugged much as a child, which is probably true. Like, I would bet money on that. Just leave it. Everything's fine. Ugh. Yeah, and like Tao and Charlie's way of dealing with this kind of thing are is really interestingly different. Like Tao, of course, fighting back, and Charlie like just wanting to de-escalate and escape the situation in any way whatsoever. Like, I mean, I'm sure this kind of developed as a defense mechanism because, um, I mean, he was the one who was bullied the previous year and who continues to get these little snide comments. And like, I'm sure he's found that the best way to get out the best way to you know deal with them is to just ride them out and escape as quickly as he can whereas Tao is actually fighting back so yeah no I'll be honest I'm not good with shaky cam I think this is a very effective technique but I can't watch it it makes me feel ill so I'm just gonna look up here while the shaky cam <laughs> happens but I think it is a very good use of shaky cam in this moment I kind of got into a fight with Harry he didn't have to do that yeah charlie just looks so just stricken and like guilty in this moment and upset that nick did this because of him yeah and it's interesting that in the comics like this scene plays out really differently in the comics like basically um it doesn't happen in school that they have this confrontation it's not even a confrontation like they have plans i want to say is that when they go to the beach together? I can't remember. But in any case, they're going off to do something. I think it's their beach date day. But um, Charlie comes over to Nick's place and he sees the black eye and he's like, what happened? And Nick tells him and Charlie's just like, well, I don't like that you got hurt, but Harry really deserved a punch in the face. <laughs> and then they have a talk about how uh, Nick is a Gryffindor and Charlie is clearly a Slytherin. So yeah, a little bit different there. But I think this reaction makes a lot of sense given kind of Charlie's tendency to draw guilt onto himself and um yeah the fact that he sees himself as someone who like hurts other people through his own existence so I'm used to people saying stuff about me but you shouldn't have to be but like, people shouldn't be saying stuff about you in the first place you shouldn't have to put up with anything like that and I think this is the first time that we really hear Nick being angry to no <laughs> Stay off my desk. <laughs> Scene stealer. Uh, we see Nick being angry kind of at Charlie. Like, he's not angry with Charlie, but this is the first time we really see him, like, being angry in Charlie's presence with, like, it directed at Charlie. And I think that's why Charlie says, sorry, next. Sorry. No. You're not allowed to say the S word. And, you know, Nick obviously is trying to point out to Charlie, like, no, this is messed up. This shouldn't be a thing. Whereas all Charlie hears is the anger in Nick's voice, the fact that he has a black eye, and he just has to apologize for his own presence kind of causing this in Nick's life. So I don't even want to be friends with those people. I don't expect you to dump your friends for me. Yeah, and I think what Charlie doesn't understand here is that it's not Nick dumping his friends for for Charlie. I mean, that's part of it, but it's really more Nick dumping his friends for himself. Some other rugby boys are nice. Even they just stood there. Yeah, and we talked about this earlier, but it's interesting that this is the reason why Nick cuts off some of his best friends, um, Cy, Otis, and Christian, who we don't really, we don't really see that relationship in the show, but in the, in the comics, it's clear, like, they're before he meets Charlie and everybody, they're his best friends. But, like, he's essentially cutting them out of his life for doing the same thing that he used to do, which is standing quietly by and letting Harry be a dick to other people. So, um, I mean, it's good that Nick has reached the point where he's not content to just stand by. Like, he's standing up to, to Harry. He's, you know, facing him down and even fighting him when he acts like like a complete dick. So... I'm tired of all of them. And it must especially be, like, a big contrast for Nick because um, Nick spent the whole last episode kind of with Charlie's friends, with Tara and Darcy and Elle, 
and Tao, I mean, Tao is not a great example of this, but like um, Nick has kind of seen how it can be when you're with people who actually like are not douchebags and, uh, you know, respect your identity and the identity of other people and don't say mean shit for no reason. So like after that experience of him going out with Charlie's friends and now Charlie going out with his friends, I think it's really clear to him how awful his friends are in comparison. And like, honestly, this is the most public that they've been with their relationship through the whole show. Like in the arcade, they were kind of like in a little area all by themselves when they kissed at the park, like Nick pulled away as soon as someone walked by. But here, like they're in form, they're sitting in a classroom with a bunch of their peers and Nick is still resting his head on Charlie's shoulder. Yeah. And here we see Charlie kind of pulling away from everybody and isolating himself again. I think it was my fault. Harry picking on me and Charlie. I can handle it because I can stick up for myself, but Charlie can't. And so here we kind of learned that like, one of the reasons Tao's been fighting back is because he thinks that Charlie can't stick up for himself. And like, I'm, I mean, that's debatable, but I think it's more that Charlie doesn't want to stick up for himself because he wants to kind of you know, kind of how we saw earlier, his his main priority is de-escalating and escaping. So he doesn't want to talk back to the bullies or fight back in any way. Whereas Tao is much more of like the let's let's fight back, let's show them they can't walk all over us kind of thing. Which and it's debatable which one works if either of them work at all because you know there's not much you can do when a bully is is there. So I just kept thinking about how bad it was for Charlie last year. I just made things worse. Yeah, and. I mean, I think this is a really important thing to remember that Tao was there when Charlie was being bullied the previous year. He saw how awful it was. And like in the comics that we really get into it, where like, you know, Charlie was was afraid to come to school. Like he was crying all the time, well, yeah, crying all the time. But like, you know, he was really upset and for obvious good reasons to be upset. So, yeah. So it makes sense that Tao is protective. We already know that he has abandonment issues for whatever reason. And we know that he is, I guess he views his friend group as kind of the most important thing in his life. He feels very protective towards Charlie, which is understandable. I mean, I don't know anyone who would meet Charlie and not feel protective towards him, except for Harry and Ben. But Harry just thinks it's fun to pick on people. Yeah, not only does Harry think it's fun to pick on people, like... It seems to be be his main source of like social capital. Like I think he feels like if he can make the lads laugh by picking on other people, then they'll stick with him. I don't know. I wonder if there's an element too of like I don't know when if he picks on people, then like you stay silent so he doesn't pick on you. Kind of situation there as well. But did he ever say anything to you? Yeah, sometimes. You should have said something. You could have gone and told a teacher. Yeah. Maybe. The fact that Tao thinks that telling a teacher would solve that problem makes me question his, like, his naivete in that in that situation. Because, like, that's... I mean, it can help to a certain degree, but it there's only so much that it can do. And, like, even Charlie said, like, when he was dealing with, with the situation the previous year, Mr. Ajayi was the only teacher who seemed to care, so doesn't seem like they have many supportive teachers around but it wasn't like he was the only one that was saying stuff to me yeah that must have been a nightmare coming out as a trans girl in an all-boys school I mean props to Elle for putting up with that because that has got to be an absolute nightmare I'm not surprised Nick started a fight with him if Harry was being a dick to Charlie of course is there something actually going on between Nick and Charlie yeah, they're going out. This moment is kind of, it's kind of a question mark because like, was it Elle's place to essentially out Nick and Charlie to Tao? I mean, he had figured it out. He says there is, isn't there. So her choices here are either to lie or tell the truth or say something like, it's not my place. You should talk to Charlie, um, which probably would have been the best choice but 
I understand too that she feels like, I mean uh, that would have been pretty clear with like the answer if she had said that but I kind of wished that she had said that because I think it would have had the same result of Tao realizing that Nick and Charlie are together but she wouldn't have outed them I'm sure it's a big shock for him like Every piece of evidence that he's paid attention to up until now has told, has confirmed the fact that Nick is straight and leading Charlie on and, you know, setting him up for some long con joke or something. But now here is evidence that, like, no, actually, that's not what's going on. Charlie has been right the whole time about Nick. And so Tao can either, like, reevaluate every single feeling that he has about Nick or he can get angry. So he gets angry. Who else knows? Isaac, Tara, and Darcy. Yeah, we talked about this before, but, like, I feel like some context would be helpful here. Like, if she had not just listed the people who know and instead said, well, nobody told Isaac, but he figured it out, and Nick told Tara and Darcy and me, then Tao would not feel like Charlie had betrayed him and told everyone except him. I should go. My mom's probably waiting. Tao! It's a lot to process. It's a lot for Tao to process. The fact that, like, the, the, basically what he's been basing his whole behavior on for the last several months is completely wrong. Like, that's a lot to deal with. And I'm sure there's also, there's a lot of things going on there. Like, realizing that he was wrong is a hard thing to deal with. And sometimes we lash out when we hear that. And second of all, like, the kind of feeling of betrayal that he feels towards Charlie not telling him when all this time I think Tao has seen himself as like Charlie's best friend and best protector and the only person standing between Charlie and the horrible bullies and Nick and all the harm that they could do to him and like I'm sure that's a role that started the previous year when he literally was you know, the only thing standing between Charlie and the bullies. Um, In the comics it's kind of revealed that um, Tao was I don't know, Tao was really the only one who was super close to Charlie at that time, um, whereas Elle and, in this case, Isaac, in the comics, Aled, sort of came into their lives a little bit after that. But, like, you know, I think Tao has really grown into his position as Charlie's protector and learning that this person that he's kind of put all of his energy into, quote-unquote, protecting has not even seen him as a close enough friend to confide in him something like this, something this big. It's It hurts, but he doesn't have all the information. Like, we know this. He doesn't know that Charlie has told no one. Charlie has been protecting Nick this whole time. Um, Charlie has been letting Nick set the pace as far as coming out to people. It's not a decision that he made to exclude Tao. Now, as we talked about last time, Charlie probably should have made time to tell Tao before now, um, after the milkshake cafe, but it's a hard thing to do. So, and I'm, and again, we see like Charlie, Charlie kind of, Charlie likes to avoid negative situations. Like we know that he tries to deescalate and, and run away when there's a bullying situation going on, which is totally fair. But in this too, I'm sure he saw it as a conflict with Tao because that's what it would be. Let's face it. Um, and so he avoided it. And in this case, avoiding it has led Tao to feel like like Charlie doesn't care about him as much as Tao cares about Charlie. So look at all those hearts. <laughs> yeah, Charlie's spiraling a bit here. And the fact that Nick replies immediately, of course, are you OK? Is it a potato? It's supposed to be a shoe. It's fixable. If we want to get poetic, we can see this as a metaphor, kind of Tao sort of messing things up and Elle coming in to try to make them better. Kind of similar to this situation where Tao has completely overreacted, granted because he doesn't have, he didn't have, he doesn't have all the information. um, And Elle has come to try to, to try to do damage control. Much like she does to the shoe potato. Charlie does want to tell you. I think I know why he hasn't. He thinks that I'll accidentally say something stupid and out Nick to all of Nick's mates. Tao says this pretty decisively, but I don't think that's what's going on here at all. Um, 
I mean, it is a danger, especially because Tao literally like says quite loudly in front of a large group of people, why didn't you tell me about you and Nick to Charlie later? But regardless, like, I don't think that's what's going on with Charlie at all. It's clearly just he is protecting Nick. He's letting Nick set the speed. And then also he's avoiding conflict and is nervous to tell Tao because Tao has been anti-Nick this whole time. So hello, feline visitor. <laughs> and obviously he cares more about Nick's feelings than mine. Again, not true. Once you get into a relationship, friendships don't matter anymore. Yeah, and here's Tao with his abandonment issues again of worrying like that, you know, the I mean, he he's kind of made the friendship group his entire life and he sees it slipping away from him. So it's understandable that he feels that way. But obviously, that's not not a healthy attitude to have. I don't know why I'm so afraid of being alone. Yeah, and it's good that Tao recognizes this, like he sees that he has these issues and he knows that he needs to work through them. But unfortunately, this moment of clarity doesn't last long. Tao and Dell. Although, like, if he hands that into his art teacher, like, aren't they going to be like, so you didn't do this yourself? <laughs> like, but it's fine. I love that Isaac works at the library. Like, that's just so fitting. And Tao lashing out in his anger. Hey. Always bad news when someone doesn't respond to the uh, the hi or the hey. All right, mate. What's this? Hey. Tao and L. Who's L? Just give it back. The fact that like we know for a fact that Harry knew L and made fun of her in class and has literally no memory of her actual name. Aww. Did your girlfriend draw it? Just give it back now! <laughs> and, <laughs> so interesting to me that like, Harry all the time is like, oh, you and your boyfriend. Oh, is that your boyfriend? Oh, boyfriend. And then the second that he gets his hand on this drawing, his hands on this drawing, he's like, oh, did your girlfriend draw it? <laughs> so like, he, it's like he uses relationships as a weapon. Like he's always, making fun of people for having a boyfriend or girlfriend when they clearly don't. He's always making fun of the guys for not bringing a girl or for Nick being thick about girls and things like that. So, like, what what is his deal? <laughs> like, why are you like this, Harry? Ugh. Yeah, and I feel like Tao probably would not have reacted quite this strongly if not for the fight with Charlie, obviously. Like, he's very upset right now. Um... And again, do not condone violence, but I'm not sad that Harry gets a drink thrown in his face. So Tao's like, yeah, last, last straw. You're going to regret that. <laughs> There's a really funny part in the, uh, the blooper reel actually where like, I guess, <laughs> I guess Cormac who plays Harry did not close his eyes enough at this moment or um will who plays tau like directed the juice too much in his face because like he's there saying you're gonna get this but like he can't open his eyes because he's got juice in them so yeah i, I highly recommend the uh, the blooper reel if you haven't watched it i mean the fight with harry was my fault it wasn't though it was charlie taking all the blame onto himself i've been making your life really difficult watching nick's face through this whole interaction is just heartbreaking like you know he can tell what's coming and yeah he sees where charlie is going with this and just he just looks absolutely just heartbroken and stricken that charlie is saying these words to him and harry green's fighting somebody at 10 by the picnic table thank you small child see kind of the moment of realization like wait shit <laughs> now violence is not funny but this fight is kind of hilarious <laughs> like First, they're, they're fighting over the juice while everyone is filming. Starts hitting him with his hat. Like, the thought of punching him doesn't even occur to Tao. He's just like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whip this guy with my hat. Yeah, I'm really glad that Nick prevents Harry from punching Tao, obviously. Oh, and the poor shoe potato. Tao, what happened? Why didn't you tell me about you and Nick? And again, Tao, like... You're screaming this in public where there's a lot of people who still have their phones out and recording. So, like, maybe, maybe shh. 
but he's upset, I understand. I thought we were friends, but I guess you've just forgotten about me. Tom, this is all your fault. Just leave me alone. Yeah, so this is the one, so, here, wait, I'll just let the, the, I'll let the episode finish and then we'll talk about this. So you can sleep. Quiet lies that you yeah, so a lot of what Tao does and says, I think, makes sense from his point of view. Some of it is not good. Um, a lot of it is like ill-advised and coming from sometimes a bad place, but like I think it's understandable in a lot of ways. But this thing that he says, he says he knows Charlie. Like he's he's been Charlie's best friend for a long time. They've known each other since they were 11, he says in the next episode. So he knows that Charlie is someone who takes who takes the blame for anything that goes wrong. Um, and the fact that he says the one thing that is bound to hurt Charlie more than anything else, this is all your fault. Like, that is not okay. Like, that, Tao knew that that was going to really hurt Charlie. And I know that Tao himself is really hurting here because... Because of the limited information that he has, he thinks that Charlie has essentially betrayed him, which is not the case. But it's it's completely out of line for him to say that to Charlie, knowing how much that's going to get into Charlie's head after everything that he's been through and how he is as a person. So that is the one thing that I cannot defend Tao on at all. <laughs> like, he should not have said that. Him saying that was completely the wrong thing to say. Um, but... I mean, sometimes we, th we say things, I, I feel like nobody can hurt you like your best friend because they know you better than anybody. Um, and I think most of us have been in that situation where we've said something that we know is going to hurt our friend or they've said something to us in the same way because we have that information. We know, we know what will hurt them. Um, so it's unfortunate that the Tao does that here, but I mean, that's, that's what he did. So yeah, but of course... Things are going to be resolved. Episode 8 is coming up next. And, ugh, I would, yeah. Yeah. But this episode, this episode is a meaty episode. There's a lot in it and a lot going on and obviously a lot of angst happening. But I do think it makes sense um, to have this kind of slight, you know, this slight drama and this slight kind of darkness so that then when we have the happy resolution, it means all the more as a result. But, yeah. <laughs> okay, so in any case, um, thank you as always for watching. Please leave your comments below about your thoughts about the episode. As I've said, as I say every time, I read every single comment. I love reading your essays. The longer the better. Um, tell me all your thoughts, all the things that you have to say about, about this episode. Um, yeah, I will say that, like, please, please don't, like, please don't bash Tao in the comments. Like, I know, I know he's a polarizing character and he has a lot of things that he does not great and a lot of things that hurt Charlie, but like, let's not, let's not do that. Let's not bash him. Um, when there's someone who deserves to be bashed, um, Harry and of course Ben, haha, -ha, bash. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter or Instagram or Twitch if you want for some reason more of me or uh, you want to be pal. I will. I generally follow people back. Um, and yeah, I, I hope to be back with episode eight before too long. Uh, we'll see. We'll see when I have time to do that. Hopefully I will. I will carve out some time this week and we'll see. But yeah, and that's going to be the last episode of this season of Heartstopper. Um, of course, I hope to be back when, when season two comes around, but I've also been thinking about doing some um, non-reaction Heartstopper-related videos. Like, I'd like to do some some deep dives on the characters and maybe look at themes and talk about the comics and all sorts of stuff. So hopefully I'll still have some, some content, Heartstopper-related content in the future, even after we go through next episode. So, all right, well, that is all from me. Um, yes, I have talked a lot and the cats are really clearly wanting me to feed them so I will go do that before they both jump on top of my keyboard and mess this all up so that is all and I will talk to you next time goodbye